service here uh, at Ingalls Park years ago even before there was such a building as we have now and yet some people tell me some of their favorite sunrise services were way back when before we had a cover over our building and we held services we had the horseback riders and and a lot of things that went on on the hillside the hill that is no longer there anymore so uh, I want to welcome you. What a great turnout for a, a Sunday, Easter Sunday, when we haven't had it for a couple of years. So thank you for coming and being faithful and sharing with us this wonderful day. The resurrection of Christ. I believe is the most important event in the history of the world. Because that one event changes our whole purpose for life. And so as we come to celebrate that great and wonderful event, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, I would like to ask you to stand as we open our service today with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have brought us together once again. We thank you for the faith of those who have come to share together this celebration of this wonderful day. We thank you and ask your blessing upon everyone who has come to share this celebration with us. And for this celebration, we thank you. We thank you for giving your life that we might live eternally. For it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And you may be seated. Oh 
beginning in verse 22, we find recorded the events of the crucifixion of Christ and those events that led up to that crucifixion. Pilate is watching Jesus as he stands before him in trial and he says, what shall I do with this Jesus who is called Christ, Pilate asked. They all answered, crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? Asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. But all the people answered, let his blood be on us and on our children. And then he released Barabbas to them. But he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. And then the governor's soldiers took Jesus to the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And then they twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own robe on him. And then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two robbers were crucified with him, one on his right side and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, you're going, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it up again in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you're the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, the elders mocked him. <laughs> he saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross and we will believe him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. In the same way, the robbers who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, 
darkness came over all the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? However, when some of those standing there heard this, they said, he's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with vinegar, and put it on a stick, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now, leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. The tombs broke open and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. And when the centurion and those who were with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. Who is the man who can walk on water?
when that amazing power of Christ resides in your life, a melody will ring joyously in your heart. from heaven above there never was a sweeter melody tis a melody of love in my heart there rings a melody there rings a melody with heaven's harmony in my heart there rings a melody there rings a melody of love I love the Christ who died on
I hope that as you came in this morning, you picked up one of these communion cups. If you did not do that, you may pick one up at this time by going down to the corner and picking up the, uh, your cup if you would like to participate with us in our communion service today. Uh, we often refer the, to this as the Lord's Table. Actually, I think the Lord's Table is probably a more descriptive term to understand that Christ instituted for us by observing the Passover feast with his disciples and he changed the meaning of that feast by taking the cup and, and telling them this now is my blood. I would like to read to you from Matthew the 27th chapter beginning in verse 57 the scripture says as evening approached there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph who had himself become a disciple of Jesus I think it is evident that Joseph had some clout with the politicians in Jerusalem because he was actually able to get an appointment with Pilate. And so the Bible says, going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. And Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. Christ had been crucified and now he was buried in a borrowed tomb. His death on the cross was payment for our sin. The Bible uses the term redemption. Redemption means to buy back something that was lost or stolen. Christ, through his death, purchased back our life, which had been stolen by Satan as a result of our sin. At this time in our service, I want to invite you to join us in the communion service as we remind ourselves and one another through this communion that Christ has redeemed our life and purchased us by the price of his blood. I'm going to ask us to stand. Ralph Van Hall is going to lead us in a word of prayer. Then we are going to sing the song entitled, The Love of God. During the singing of the song, you may take your communion at any time while we sing. The music group will take their communion during the prayer. And after the service, I would like to ask you to please deposit your empty cups in the trash can somewhere and don't leave them on the bleachers. Now let's bow our heads as we go to the Lord in prayer. Jesus, because of your divine nature, you already knew that as you came down that road into Jerusalem on that donkey, that you would soon suffer at the hands of the disbelievers. You still chose to do so and suffer as a human being because of your love for us. You were betrayed, denied, mocked, spat upon, and whipped. You were made to carry the weight of our sins, and then you were crucified on the cross. But then, on that third day, you arose and came back to life. You defeated Satan's sin and eternally proved that you are our Savior. Now, because of our faith, we partake of this communion and celebrate this day of your resurrection. We can experience the joy of having you in our hearts and look to being with you eternally in heaven. Thank you that we can worship and praise you here today. Thank you, Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen.
The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priest and the Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they said, we remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said, after three days I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he has been raised from the dead. And this last deception will be worse than the first. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go make the tomb as secure as you know how. And so they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting a guard. Thank you. 
Yeah. 
to return to the Bible this morning just for a few moments because the story of Christ is not yet finished. Christ's body had been placed in a borrowed tomb. A guard of Roman soldiers had been placed at the entrance of the tomb. The religious leaders of the day were afraid of a conspiracy, so they did their best to secure the possibility of any tampering with the entrance to the tomb that might lead to the idea that Christ had risen from the dead. But something unexpected, wonderful, and miraculous was about to happen. And so we read in Matthew 28, verse 1. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen. Just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead.
that when we trust our life to Jesus Christ, we will have a home in glory greater than what we could ever imagine on earth when we depart here from the face of this earth, never to return again. Yeah. 
still recovering from surgery and two plates and eight screws in my legs from all of that and so uh, I have been preaching from a chair in the last two or three months so I want to thank you so much for coming out this morning what a beautiful beautiful Easter's resurrection day it has been Thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to say thank you to our music group uh, for all of their work. Please let them know how much you appreciate them. And I want us to close as we always do with our Easter sunrise services because he lives. together. 
God sent His Son. They called Him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon.